Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. Kids, teachers, parents, I keep hearing good things, so thank you for all the compliments. Um, this is a homework video for Eureka Math, grade five, module one, lesson 12 homework. And so the objective here is to multiply a decimal fraction by a single digit whole number, and then including using estimation to confirm the placement of the decimal point. And so we're estimating. We're multiplying and we're estimating and we're just trying to figure out where does the decimal go when you have all these choices like does place value really matter yes it does if you really don't understand um, what you're doing here or you haven't checked out the problem set please go watch the problem set video that I made it's very helpful it has great background notes and you can get some practice before you actually jump in and try the homework which is what you're supposed to be doing on your own Okay, so let's get started. Now that you probably have already done the other practice and you kind of know what you're doing, give it a try. Always do try to finish the homework on your own and then only use this video for support to check your work. So we're gonna choose the reasonable product. We wanna see what is reasonable for each expression. So we do have to explain our thinking in the spaces below. That's what the big gaps are for, not just for nice white space to keep it pretty. So, um, we are going to use words, pictures, or numbers. So whatever makes sense, we might have a variety of things. Uh, so we're gonna take our first one, 2.1 times three, or two and one tenth times three. Or we could even call it 21 tenths times three. Essentially what we're looking at is two ones times three. If I have two, approximately, because that's what this is, approximate, two times three, I know I'm gonna get approximately six. If I do two times three, I will get exactly six, but I don't have exactly two. I have a little bit more. So I know that my answer choice should be somewhere around six. Look at what you have. You have 63 hundredths. That's not six ones. This one has six ones. This one has six tens. This one has six hundredths. So your logical guess would be here. So take your unit form and use that as an explanation so that you can see the full and correct answer. 21 tenths times three ones. So we've been talking about this using this unit form without the decimals. It's kind of helpful if you can know what the units are to remove the decimal and then put it in later. So the 21 times three gives you 63, three times one is three, and then three times two is six, and I don't have to worry about the decimal. And I can just label it, tenth, tenths times ones is tenths. Then you can take your 63 tenths and match it to your exact estimation. So we're choosing a reasonable product based on our, our um, rounding here, using the whole numbers only, and then we're using unit form to confirm, yes, this is the correct placement for the decimal, okay? Let's do that again. So if I take my four ones times six, it's approximately four times six, which is 24. Now, if you look at 24 ones, then that's not really close to this 2000. It's not even really close to 200. It is close to 25, and it's not really close to two. Notice they changed the decimal in every one so that you can get a good look, and you're trying to get close to the place value location. So again, take your 427 hundredths or your two digit. Uh, you can even eliminate this and say four ones times six ones makes 24 ones, which is very close to 25 ones. Close to 25 ones. So again, lots of different reasoning that you can describe. You can use uniform, you can just round it. Uh, so that's another helpful way to describe. Here's another one. Look at all these digits to the right that just really don't matter because I'm really very close to just a seven times six, which would give me 42. So again, take your seven ones 
times six ones for 42 ones, and then find the one with 42 ones, okay? Thousands, nope, hundreds, nope, ones, yes, uh, sorry, tens, yes, and ones, no. So it's gonna be 42 ones, which ends here. Ah, there goes my lead. There we go. 42 ones ends there. So it's four in the tens place, two in the ones place. That's why we call it 42 ones. And this is just four ones, but it's 42 tenths ending there. So I hope that makes sense for you. Remember, we're just estimating, so use all the ones. Oh, it's blurry. Focus, thank you. So nice when the iPad cooperates. Okay, and again, nine times four. You could also look at this 0.82 and say, hmm, that could bump me up to nine times five. Either way, if I have nine times four, I get 36. And if I have nine times five, I have 45. So looking at the, the choices here, if I'm closer to 45, it's not four ones. I need four tens. This one has four tens, so 43.38 is going to be the closest one. So um, it could be between, can be between 36 and 45, but we need two digits in the whole number answer. Okay, and so the two digits being ones and tens. So here we are. There you go. Turn the page. All right, couple of word problems. A few, a small handful of word problems. Yi Ting weighs eight and three tenths kilograms. Her older brother is four times as heavy as Yi Ting. How much does her older brother weigh in kilograms? So if Yi Ting is one of these, 8.3, Her older brother is four times as heavy. I love showing you guys how to do those tape diagrams. It's approximately like so. Yi Ting and the bro. Okay, so um, he's gonna be four times that. This is what the picture would look like, just in case they say, how much do they weigh together? Well, you would classify these, find out the brother, and then uh, do your addition. What if it says, what's the difference? You can do subtraction. So you can do all kinds of things once you have your tape diagrams. But this question says, how much does her older brother weigh in kilograms? So I need to know what these four, like the total of these four pieces. So it's gonna be, sorry about that, scribble, four times 8.3. Some students will want to line them all up and do 8.3 plus 8.3 plus 8.3 plus 8.3. And I will not stop you, but our new strategy is to use, say, an area model. That can work because I have four times eight ones, three tenths. And then it's four ones on the outside. So this one's, remember, the four times eight ones and four times three tenths. So you're gonna get 32 ones and 12 tenths. And then when you write that in standard form and be very careful, I think I messed that up yesterday on the previous lesson on lesson 11, but I fixed it super fast. So 32 ones would put your decimal to the right, but you don't have to put it because it's just ones and there are no tenths. But this one does have 1.2 because it's 12 tenths, the two ending in the tenths place. Now when we add, we don't have any regrouping because I'm looking at the ones and I'm looking at the ones and I can add horizontally by going, okay, the two tenths will have no add end over here. The ones place has two plus one for three and the tens place has nothing else in it over here. So it's just three tens. So Yi Ting is a brother. You can just write it out. Her brother weighs 33.2 kilograms. Circle your final answer and you're ready to move on. Okay, all right, checking number three. Tim is painting his storage shed. He buys four gallons of white paint. Very important to identify what you're working with and three gallons of blue paint. 
Each gallon of white paint costs $15.72. That's for the white paint, those go together. And each gallon of blue paint is $21.87. Three gallons of blue, that goes together. How much will Tim spend in all on paint? So we have to get four gallons of white and three gallons of blue. You can also make a tape diagram having little boxes of the price and then repeat it, but repeated addition comes back to its multiplication. So if we have, let's start out with the white, and we have four gallons of white times the price for the white, 1572. That's what you're gonna do for that one. And then blue, and we're getting three. And the price for blue is over here, 2187. So now you have two problems that you have to solve. You can use the area model or you can use the standard algorithm. So uh, we haven't done a whole lot, but I know you did in fourth grade. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the standard algorithm for this one. Keep it neat and we'll have lots of room. So I'm gonna move my factor, my single digit factor below and I'm gonna take my four ones and I'm gonna multiply it by each digit that goes across. First, I'm gonna ignore this decimal. That's the one thing that I'm gonna do here, and I'll tell you why in future lessons, but we'll put it back in a minute. Four times two is eight. Four times seven is 28. Carry the two over. Four times five is 20, plus two is 22. And four times one is four, plus two is six. Now, what do I do with this? If I had unit form, it would be 15 72 hundredths times four ones. And I'm gonna show you in some future lessons this same thing again, hundredths times ones is hundredths. So in my final answer, I'm gonna put my decimal so that I have hundredths and I'm gonna give myself a dollar sign and stop at the $62.88 for white paint. And I'm gonna shift over to the blue. And we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna move my three multiply it, ignore the decimal, and I'll put it in in the hundredths place when I'm done. Three times seven, 21. Then I have 24, 25, 26, carry. Three times one is three, four, five. Three times two, six. Hundredths times ones is hundredths. It's not lining up, sorry, in, um, Multiplying, we're not lining it up. I know it happens to line up here. That's because this is ones. It happens to line up here because this is ones. You'll find out in the future that that isn't always the case. So it's not about lining up when multiplying. We line up when we add and subtract. Sorry if that's confusing. That's just life. We will get to it in future lessons. Now we're gonna take our blue paint and our white paint. We're gonna put them together by lining up the decimals. 65, 61, and then we can find out how much Tim spent in all. Line up carefully and add. Eight plus one, eight plus six is 14. Carry the one, but decimal down. We had to talk about this in class today. Decimal down. Be dramatic, it's more fun. Five, six, seven, eight, and six and six is 12. Put your dollar sign. Tim spent $128.49 on paint. All the paint. And you can say on blue paint and white paint together. Okay, that was kind of crooked on the page. Sorry about that. Here we go. I just looked up finally and now I can see it. So last one. You're doing great today. Ribbon is sold at three yards for $6.33. Oh, this one's kind of hard. Sorry. Jackie bought 24 yards of ribbon for a project. How much did she pay? Goodness me, how do we set this one up? Why don't we use a tape diagram to help you see what we're doing? If ribbon is sold at three yards for $6.33, you might have something that looks like this for three yards. Okay, so make a picture. Anytime you can make a picture, do it. It will totally help you but she bought 24 yards. So every time you have another little chunk, 
that would be another three yards. So that's one way to get your 24 yards. Or you could take your 24 and you could divide it by the three yards that we have for each chunk to find out how many chunks we're gonna have. And then you'll see that we're gonna have eight chunks. One, two, three, four. Then you can do it all in the same thing. Five, six, seven, eight. So now we have our whole thing. All those threes added together would be the 24 yards. <clears throat> and then we have each set of three yards being the $6.33. So how much did she pay? Now you can look at your $6.33 as the one piece and see that we have to repeat that eight times. If you can flip the order of these. It can be eight times $6.33. That is fine too. Because of the commutative property, I can change the order of my factors and I will still get the same answer. So let's take that eight and use the standard algorithm here. Eight times three, 24. We just knew that. Eight times three, 24, but 25, 26. And then we have eight times six is 48, 49, 50. I have hundredths times ones, which is hundredths. I know a lot of people still really don't understand all that hundredths times ones. We'll get to it this year. Uh, just trust me, it works out. It's gonna be two positions here in the problem up on top, so two positions here in the bottom. That's the old way, that's what your parents are going, yay, I love this old math. Uh, so that's a final answer. Jackie, let's fill in our answer, Jackie. And do click subscribe before you leave and come back again and we will do more fifth grade math together. Jackie bought uh, $50.64 worth of, oh look, it slides out, worth of fabric. Ribbon, there we go. I don't even feel like getting up and turning the lights on, but I will. Come back again, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.